Hi, this is uh, Tom Delmar. I'm the uh, director and producer of Terra Nova. And I just want to say thank you very much for your uh, red carpet invite. Um, I hope you guys have a fantastic evening. And uh, if my film is uh, half as successful as yours, I'll be very happy. Uh, have a lovely, lovely, lovely time, guys, and good luck tonight. Hello there, I'm Russell T. Davis. I'm a Swansea writer. I was once in school in Swansea, just like you, and thank you for the invitation to the cinema to see the film. I'm really sorry I can't make it. Thank you for the letters. It was amazing to read about Edgar Evans, who I knew about vaguely, but I didn't know he was from Rossilli. I think that's amazing, and you've done amazing work there. So I hope the screening's a big success. Congratulations, and I hope you're all okay in these mad days. Okay, lots of love, have fun. It's lovely to be down in Putley Bay with, uh, with uh, pupils from Bishopston Primary School uh, and their teacher, Miss Mellon, and Helen Nicholas from Gower and Erst. And uh, what we're down here for is uh, to talk about the history of Edgar Evans, who is obviously from Gower and, and obviously went to the South Pole uh, with Scott uh, of the Antarctic. So uh, I'll now hand over to, to uh, Miss Mellon, who's going to give you a bit more details. OK, so um, obviously in Bishopston, uh, a real focus this year for the children's learning is teaching them about resilience and how to be resilient. So we heard the story of Edgar Evans. Um, Helen brought us on a trip um, down to Pulte where we learnt about, about what Scott and his men you know, did in the, in the South Pole. And the children just absolutely loved the story. And what better way to teach the children resilience than actually learn about it? These men were so resilient and they fought against the odds and they still made it to the South Pole. Um, but, you know, and it was, it's also really important to get that message that, you know, failure isn't you know we always fail and we you know failure doesn't mean that you aren't resilient because that's how you learn you learn through failure and actually what Scott and his men did was then help us to learn about the world and you know we when you know expeditions after we've that we've been to the South Pole they've been much more successful because of the things that they learned on that trip so you know the kids are really excited and um, you know we can't wait to see the DVD I've often sat here at the window of my great-great-grandfather Edgar's bedroom window and wondered. What did he think? Did he think of his father's adventures at sea, around the dangerous Cape Horn, to get copper ore? I do know this. The sea called to him and he wanted to adventure. Deep inside, he had spirit and strength and that is why his story is getting told today. I wonder how proud he'd be now to see us collaborate this extraordinary journey through this film put together by pupils of Bishopson Primary School. Have they been inspired to adventure? Have you?
So, are you going back, Edgar? I wish you wouldn't. I'll miss you so much. Well, Lois, I'll be rich and famous. Think about it. Remember how much people came to our wedding? It was amazing. And with Captain Scott. I'm only a petty officer. These men are captains. I'll be one of the first men to reach the South Pole. We could open a pub, Lois. A pub. Hmm, what shall we name it? The Polar, the Polar, that's it. I can see it now. Hi Edgar, here are silly, the Welsh men at the Pole. Edgar's family and the community at Rosilli wave him off the cliffs and word of one day we'll see this already heroic man again. My dear mother, a few lines to let you know that we have arrived here safely after a um, rather a long voyage. Since leaving New Zealand, we had we have had some pretty bad weather, which did some damage to the ship, and was also the cause of two ponies and one dog but dying. But we got over got over that all right. After we got to the ice, we had a job to get through. It was so thick at times we were completely blocked by it. It took us 19 days to get through 370 miles of it. The conditions were more severe than when I was down here before in the Discovery. But there is one thing, nothing seems so strange now as it did then. In fact, the place looks quite familiar to me. The Norwegians are going south. Then there's a race to the pole. Yes, it seems it is, but we are looking to discover. We are going to do science. Then science it is, but what's for tea? Finally, late in 1911, five men left their support team to do the final push to the pole. Hauling their sledges and carrying their notebooks, they set off on the greatest adventure and began a story of great heroism as they faced the hazards of the ice. Rolled Armand's men and men reach the pole first. They laugh, celebrate and read out the letter they have left for Scott to take to their king. Can you let the king of Norway know that we made it here first? Yes, we made it! I can't believe we made it here first! We are strong, well done men, we made it! We are strong, we are brave, fighting against the elements we won the race. This was the hardest thing I've ever done, but I knew we could do it. Amity and pioneered a new route from the Bay of Wales, using only dogs covering 20 miles a day. He actually gained weight on the journey and got to the South Pole 33 days before Scott. Amanderson had only wanted to win the race and he succeeded. He said, Science will have to look after itself. The goal is reached and our journey is done. Scott's party reaches the pole and they see the flag. They are getting weak. They are talking about food all the time. We see the men batting terrible weathers as temperatures plummet. Great God, this is an awful place and terrible enough for us to have laboured to it without the reward of priority. Ah, oh, it's such a shame. We tried so hard, it would have stirred the hearts of every Englishman. At least we discovered lots about science and changed the shape we see the world. 
This is going to be a tale of hardihood, endurance and courage like no other. I am dreaming of cherry pie and warm summers. I wish I wasn't home in bed. I hope Lois is able to take care of the children. I miss her so much. We should never give up. Oh, what would I do for a warm apple pie and a big pint of beer? Elephant is falling behind. Yes, it's the fool he had yesterday. He seems confused. His hands and his nose are in a bad way. Yes, it's like a potato. We must go back for him. There he is. He's on his knees. Let's camp. Yes! Morning brings still brutally cold weather. He's gone. Evans has passed away in his sleep. They bow their heads. Wilson said some words and they bury him in the ice. He is a sailor. Oh, for a little wind, the sledge won't pull. We're only covering a few miles. This is no progress. It's like pulling them through thick walls, so cold. I dread our wet shiver bags more than when we are moving. It's the food. I can't bear the hunger. Yes, when we have eaten, I can eat it all over again. They were on a deficit of around 3,000 calories a day. Evans, as the biggest and the strongest of the men, would have died first from starvation. Oats is in terrible pain. Frostbite means that it takes one and a half hours to put his shoes on. His old leg wound has opened up, meaning he can't keep up. Do I have a chance of making it back? Oates goes to bed the night before his 32nd birthday, hoping not to wake. He does. He walks out of the tent into a blizzard with final words. I'm going outside. I may be some time. Oates was the second man to die. The men have found the fossil of a glossopterous giant fin, proving the theory of continental drift. Antarctica was a continent, and thanks to Ed Wilson's keen eyes. Twelve months one ton depot. They hit terrible blizzards and freak temperatures. They were trapped in terrible Antarctic winter, and they were forced to camp. The chances of them are getting back is fading away to nothing. We are getting weaker, the end is near, but I don't think I can write anymore. didn't make it. We thought the Titanic was bad, but this is even worse. His poor wife and children not knowing he was dead for a year. Mm -hmm. The tent of death. Can you imagine how terrible that must have been? How did they pull up with that? They failed. No, they didn't. Is failure someone that doesn't give up on the first hurdle? Is it someone who learns key strategies to pass on to future generations? Getting things wrong does not equal failure. 
Not being able to predict the weather doesn't equal failure. They're brave, courageous men. Edgar Evans was a humble local man who was born and raised in Nagawa and was a son of a seaman. Not a failure, but sheer determination. Men of equal importance fighting against the impossible. Their message was still the hearts of everyone. Once there was a man from Wales, a strong and resourceful man, described as full of anecdotes. This man was called Edgar Evans and he travelled from Rosilly in Wales to the South Pole in Antarctica, a journey of nearly 10,000 miles. Nobody has ever been to the South Pole before. They were adventuring into the unknown, a big blank spot on the map. They were extremely brave men and they helped to transform the understanding of our planet. Their journeys and their scientific discoveries they made are still vitally important today. Five mighty men, including one from Wales, set off on a journey of challenge and never did they make any fails. Crevices, glistering glaciers, wicked weather that would fill anyone with their worst fears. Strong, brave men with their eyes filled with tears. Never once did they fail even making headlines in the Daily Mail. Edgar Evans, the petty officer, the mighty, the mightiest of them all, he changed the way we see the world and forever we will call him a hero. I'm really sorry to say, but I don't think Edgar's made it. Ice as tall as mountains, blue, violet and green were all that could be seen. Vibrant colours lit up the death penalty. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you.